Okay, good afternoon. Today we're going to do three things. I'm going to talk a little bit about the plot, the characters and the themes of the novel The Black Motor Car from 1904. This is an illustration straight from the first edition. And I'll do that. You know that this is not a required reading, but I'll do that for two reasons. One, because the novel in many ways is aligned in the treatment of the technology of the automobile with what we've seen, the approach followed by Jules Verne in The Master of the World. So that we know that Jules Verne's case is not isolated. Jules Verne means France, same year of publication. With Berlin, the author of this novel, we're moving to England, and we could offer a few examples in the US as well. Although in the US, the genre that became uh, more successful in reference to the automobile was the motor romance. That is to say, a love story where the automobile is the platform on which the love story develops, the medium, the instrument, but the second reason why we're talking about the black motor car is that, as you will see in a couple of weeks in October, when I will introduce the standard, the default final project, I will oh, I always offer also alternatives of a more traditional format for anyone who is happier to write a traditional paper. And for this semester, the black motor car would be such an alternative. This way you at least have a rough idea of what the novel is about, and then after you hear about the parameters for the final project, you can decide what option to pursue. After that, as promised, we're going to engage in a class activity that is done in preparation for the next written assignment, which, is fo which focuses on uh, Verne and on the character of John Strzok and his fear, concerns, but also his fascination with the technology of the terror, this device that can fly, go on land, go on, on the surface of the sea, go under the surface of uh, the sea, with reference to specific example and that's what we'll do in the class activity look for examples that you can then use develop for your assignment finally as usual for a thursday we will watch scenes from the horror movie christine from 1983 we will watch the first part the first third of this movie but before we do that I will talk about the similarities that one can easily find in the presentation of the car and the interaction with the technology of the car. Similarities between this film and the two other films that we've seen up to now, Herbie the Love Bug and Bumble. Okay? Before I'll just reviewed with you briefly a couple of announcements. I don't think I put this on the screen, although it has been there for quite a while. Keep in mind that I moved next door, so instead of room N for North 3004, you find me in 3005. Maybe I did, maybe I mentioned that. Also, this Saturday at 10 a.m. at the Village Center near the Arbor Front Park in Port Jefferson Village, there will be another reenactment of the hill climb that was held in Port Jefferson in 1910. At the time, hill climbs were one of the favorite modality of modalities of racing, and hill climbs have remained popular in Europe. In Europe, there is a European championship 
Hill Climb Championship. And there is a national championship in several countries, including Italy. Of course, it is not as valued by the companies that produce cars as it was in the 1960s and 70s when teams run by Ferrari, Porsche, Abarth were participating in those races. Nowadays in the hill climbs is mostly gentlemen drivers, people with enough money to buy a, a suitable car and pay for mechanics to accompany them on the side of the race. In any case, the uh, event in Port Jefferson is interesting because last year there were quite a few cars pre-1910 or pre-1920. This was the best uh, car from that group, the Black Beast, Bet Noir, the 1909 car that won the Vanderbilt Cup Championship, and this is Howard Kroplick, the uh, owner and also the car historian uh, and historian of the Vanderbilt Cup races that I mentioned earlier. The car is almost original and you can see from the pictures or you can also click on a link to a YouTube video how difficult it can be to drive a car and, and the car is pretty fast uh, considering that they started on an incline after a, a turn. Uh, and you can see how difficult it is for the mechanician, for the mechanic, for uh, the crew of the car to stabilize themselves and their handles, right, uh, to do that. Okay. And as I said before, you can see pictures if you want a selection of pictures that I took uh, last year from this event. And there is the YouTube video. This is another picture. You can see the intensity in the face of this, of this guy. Think of that face when you will be reading texts from the 1900s where they're talking about the intoxication of speed. Speed being like being inebriated or uh, uh, being sick with a bug, the bug of motor racing, okay? And even the illustrations from the early 1900s show multiple examples of this intensity in the eyes of the driver. The car is a 1954 Jaguar. So let's talk about the black motor car by Harris Birdland, who was a British writer. This was, I believe, his third novel. He will go on to write many novels until 1919 or so and you can read or download the novel on Google Books among others you can probably find it in other digital collections in case later on you want to make this the focus of your paper you just have to download the text or read it from the screen as it is offered by Google Books so What's the story? And, and from the very beginning, from the premise, you can see that as it was common in entertaining commercial novels of the period, there is a strong moralistic treatment of the characters. And by moralism, I refer to an extreme simplification of moral issues, whereby not only you have good versus evil in the story, which is something you tend to find also in modern day films, but deciding who's on the side of good, who's on the side of evil is even too easy. And oftentimes what determines the affiliation of a character with good or evil in their trajectory, in their lives, is something very simple, a very simple event or a trauma or a situation that made them what they are, okay? So there is this 
simplistic idea that anything can happen to you and you turn into an evil character. In this case, we have an honest man who has a family but has fallen in love. He actually has fallen for a temptress, a seductress, one of these uh, quasi-supernatural female characters from the novels of the period who can hypnotize men, who can attract men and make them lose their mind, their values. So Jack falls in love for Marie, and of course Marie is just after his money. He's a bank manager, he has access to the money, money of the bank, and this is what happens. Marie has him steal money from the bank to give it to her with the uh, promise that in fact the money will be used by both because they'll uh, flee England and they'll establish a new life together uh, in, in South America. Of course, this doesn't happen. Not only is Jack arrested and sent to prison for several years for stealing the money from the bank, but his wife finds out, before he's arrested, finds out about this affair and how deep the, the involvement of Jack is with this woman, and she dies of a literal heartbreak, right? In these novels, women, uh, a few times men as well, can die from a broken heart. So, we know from the beginning that Jack was a banker, but also had, had a hobby, and the hobby was mechanical engineering, and Jack disappears from the novel. Who appears on the scene after Jack has been to prison and disappears? This madman inventor, and of course the terms sound familiar, by the name of William Jardison, by the end of the novel, of course, we have the powerful revelation that William is none other than Jack, who came back with this black, powerful black car of his invention to exact revenge, to have Marie uh, suffer as much as he suffered. In the meantime, Marie as well has made a new life in England under a new name, but we'll know later on who she really is. So, what about the technology at the center of the novel, the black motor car? Well, it's not really the kind of individual technology based on the category I introduced during the first week and the readings of the first week. It is still similar to Jules Verne's The Terror in that it's almost like a train engine or even a ship, a vessel, something that has to be maneuvered with care in the same way that you would a ship, but it is provided with incredible, extraordinary speed. So the speed was terrific, it's just one of many quotes about this, but also has an almost ghostly silence, right? Because this is a vehicle that has to help this madman slash criminal commit thefts and also attack people in the middle of the night and appear mysteriously everywhere in England from southern England up to Inverness. So it can be everywhere in an instant almost like Jules Verne's terror. Here is the description, the first description of the car. It was made entirely of steel. So that's why I'm saying it's more reminiscent of ships because cars from the period were made of steel and brass, right? The bodies are brass and that's why some of the best kept, best preserved cars we have in museums or in the hands of collectors are cars from the early 1900s because brass uh, uh, lasts longer, it's not subject to, to, to rust and bore some resemblance to the engine of an armored train. So the reference to an armored train to military usage uh, tells you that this is a weapon of sorts. It had a nine foot wheel base, so it's quite wide, right? And was 
18 feet in length. Very long. It, as it lay at rest, it looked like a huge unwieldy monster, and monster is the word that is used repeatedly in the novel to refer to this, a nerve mass of metal. Nerve is a reference to the symbiotic interaction between the machine and the crew, the machine and the driver, right? Through the uh, maneuvering of the car, the car acquires, by extension, the nervous system of the people using it. It weighed no less than three tons, which is the more acceptable detail given the dimensions. For example, one of the cars uh, that we will see at the center of a book later on, the book by Luigi Barzini, the Itala, was in fact more than two tons, for example, in real life, and that machine is still found in a museum in Turin. Higgin? If it's, in, if it's like a nerve mass, though, would the engine be the brain or the driving the brain? No, it's the idea that it's not something that is inanimate. Once you put a driver on it, it's the, the driver that becomes the extension of the car, and therefore the car acquires a nervous system rather than vice versa, rather than the car being an extension of, let's say, the driver's legs. Uh, so it was painted black, black because it appears in the dark, it, it, it is the instrument of a criminal, and because black, exemplifies evil in a simplistic view of the moral war. Bonnet, body, wheels, all a dead dull black without any luster of enamel to relieve the gloom of its surface. It was in truth an ugly thing, a cross between a hearse and a locomotive. Yet it represented the last word in motors. It was William Jordison's triumph, the almost perfect car, almost perfect because this is a diabolical invention and therefore cannot be perfect because in the end you can guess what happens to Jordison slash Jack. His, he dies and his car is destroyed, right? As you find at the end of Jules Verne's novel, the evil technology, the technology that is too powerful to be controlled by a defective humanity has to perish, the inventor has to perish, the technology has to be destroyed. And here you find a reference to the ubiquity, the ability to be in multiple places almost at the same time that we found also in Verne. It might one day be in Yorkshire, the next in Devon, the next in Inverness, so from the south to the north of England, and, and to Scotland, actually. It might be seen anywhere and by any inhabitant in Great Britain. So a single piece of this technology becomes a threat for the entire nation, for society in general. Because after all, we have a madman who has suffered, who's seeking revenge, who wants others in general to suffer because he thinks that his suffering was unfair. And also because he was honest, because he was before he was tricked. By, by this evil woman. Of course, even in here, we have a remote hiding place for the car and the inventor, and we have a series of mysterious apparitions of the car here and there. Of course, to have good and evil, you need a good guy, right? Someone who represents the side of good. In this case, you have this Lord, who's genial, careless sportsman, where careless means brave, daring, in driving the car, and, and the novel will end, of course, with a car chase, where the good guy is chasing after the bad guy, and it's an epic car chase at speeds of 100 miles over great distances. But at the end of the car chase, momentarily, the Lord, the young aristocrat, is kidnapped. So you have this abduction. He knows more about the hideout and the technology. <coughs> he frees himself. And in the end, uh, the madman inventor is killed, the technology is destroyed. Of course, before that happened, you have disruption of road traffic, you have stealing and, and general concerns in society. A lot of scenes in the darkness and 
the final instruction. Okay, so just keep in mind, so you have a general idea that these things were common at the beginning of the 1900s in the treatment of the car, and that Jules Verne's novel is not an isolated case. David. Well, you can you speak louder, please? Yeah, the end of the the no, of course, he cannot get his revenge. He's trying to, uh, but <coughs> and, and commits acts of violence, but of course, in the end, the forces of good prevail. So, no, cannot get his revenge. Of course, his motivations were legitimate, we can understand how he was conned by this woman, but this, in a moralistic view of humans represented in the novel, is no excuse for sins, for acts that are dishonest or immoral, okay? If you were unjustly treated by someone, you should have some kind of acceptable recourse to uh, receive justice. Okay, so let's go to the activity. Let me introduce the activity. Now, as far as I'm concerned, if you want, you can do this activity with someone sitting next to you. In which case, inside the Google Docs file, you will add the name of the other person who worked with you and after this is done, you can both develop your own individual assignments using, if you want to, the examples you found in class, okay? Otherwise, you can do it individually and you can place everything in the Google Docs file that I shared with you now, or if you'd rather work on a different editor or you don't have Google Docs on the device that you have in front of you, you can write it and then copy it and paste it inside the Google Docs file by tomorrow, okay? So, we're working on this reading, not the reading I introduced in class, right? I introduced the first set of excerpts from Jules Verne myself to show how the work should be done on the other set of pages. And the new set of pages is entitled The Terror. It's still from The Master of the World, same novel. However, these are five chapters, but two are, are just a small part, portion of those chapters, having to do more directly with this machine that flies, that goes on, on the road, on the sea, under the sea. So what we're looking for are simply examples. Right now, it's just reading and finding good examples or good sentences, good expressions, right? And then at home you can develop the analysis. Or you can redo this entirely in an entirely different way after we discuss it. So we're looking for passages or examples, episodes, demonstrating, providing evidence for the protagonist and his fascination with the new technology of the terror. And also how is somewhat appreciative of the skills of Robur, who's the madman inventor of this novel, who's evil, but is powerful, right? Charismatic in some ways. The other set of examples, although it could be one each, would be the main character's fear of the technology or his suspicions about the evil use of the technology, and within that reading that is linked over there, as I said, you find bits and pieces from five chapters, but for now, and at home as well, focus on chapters 13, 14, and 15. And you have a table of contents, so you can go straight to them, okay? Now, as I said before, the purpose of this is to introduce how to read the text and find something that is relevant and powerful enough to write a convincing assignment. So my advice would be to try and find 
one example each, but it doesn't matter. It's not a matter of quantity, okay? And also, while you're doing this, you, you can call me and, and ask me questions. If you have time, you can add a summary of those passages. Otherwise, you can just copy and paste them, okay? You can add a few comments if you want to. That's up to you. But again, this is just for participation, although based on this, you may decide to use the work you've done now in your written assignment that is due, I believe, next Wednesday, okay? And at the end, I would like to, to have time to share some of the findings, but we'll see how much time really is left, okay? So you can start now. I'll give you 15 minutes. So I hope you read that chapter already. It was a, that set of readings. It was an assignment reading. But if, you're, if you haven't read them, try to skim through the readings. Look at the beginning of each paragraph and stop where you find a paragraph that would show one of these themes in great evidence fear of technology, fascination with technology, and with the inventor, okay? 15 minutes, you can do it individually, you can do it in groups, and I want to see something show up in your Google Docs file, either now or later if you want to copy and paste what you are doing now on a different editor, okay? And I'm here, call on me if you have questions or if you want to make sure that you are on the right track. Okay? Go ahead. And in the meanwhile, I'll also circulate the attendance. And again, the goal of this activity is not to show to me how well you can perform in the activity. It's for you to gain enough understanding of the process that you can do well in the assignment where a grade will be given, okay? So this is just a test for the kind of work that should be the preparation for your assignment done in class where you can consult with each other if you're doing it in group or ask questions now during the activity, at the end of the activity, or via email, etc. after the class. And we're looking for clear evidence of the themes, the same way that on Tuesday I showed evidence of similar themes in the language, in the style, and in the vocabulary used in some passages. So we're not trying to find something that is deeply hidden inside the text. We're just trying to find episodes or passages that are significant. By episodes, I mean that you may not find any particular words that point to fear or fascination, but the way the character acts or reacts shows fear, shows fascination, and Instead of quoting, you have to summarize the passage, right? So keep that in mind. 
So the way we do this is that after you volunteer to identify one or two passages that you found, you give me the coordinates. You, you give me a sentence, I can look for the page number, the beginning of a paragraph, so I can put it on the screen, everyone can see. And if you want, you can add briefly the reasons why. Of course, you tell me whether it represents a good example for fear or for fascination. And then, if you want, you can add a few comments, the reasons why you thought this was a good passage. Higgin, give me something to find the passage. Um, I think it was around like page 224, which is like the one of the verses. Okay. Yeah, it was around like right here. Where What's, um, can, do you have a, a word, a keyword, or? So this is the beginning of 224. I would say about like two paragraphs below. After this, going down? Um, maybe a little bit up. Up? Maybe a little bit up. Sure. Yeah, I therefore said. Okay. So this is the paragraph, and you can all look at it. Let me review it myself without reading aloud. So what is this an example of and why did you pick this? What drove you to it? I think it's admiration because it goes because the, the protagonist goes so in depth with the details within this paragraph and yeah. text. And so I don't think someone would be like really scared or like want to It's basically the appreciation of the engineering, right? This is a well crafted machine. Nothing is random, everything is done intentionally, is done well, all the details are taken care of. So this is an accomplished inventor. Then it is also a madman. Okay? So I'll, I'll move to someone else. You may have more examples, but I want to give more people an opportunity. Um, Alexa? Yes. No, yes, thank you. 223, sorry. So, going up, 223 is here. Which one, or should I go down? Yep. Starts off with a Below this one? Will be readily appreciated. eager desire, creator of this prodigious machine, fantastic personage. Yeah, absolutely. So it's the seduction uh, exercised by the inventor, and indirectly, this draws the uh, federal agent who's the protagonist on the side of good towards uh, the uh, technology itself and the world from which the technology was born, no matter how evil. Yeah, very fast. Right. So, and again, it's become commonplace to find, for example, in modern day movies, evil characters who are not visibly condemned from the beginning, who in fact are shown to be charismatic, right? Whether it be the evil guy played by Christopher Waltz in one of the James Bond movies or other characters often played by other mastermind characters, evil characters played by British actors such as Ben Kingsley or others to show the kind of charisma they carry forth. And also because there is this trope that goes back in time of the seductiveness of evil, right? Of the devil's effort to attract people, to seduce them, rather than simply convince them or trick them. Okay, David? Uh, so mine is at page 225. 225? Yeah, so I pretty much just started at 225 and the end of 224. Yeah, that paragraph right there, or a little bit above. This one, or? The, the one above, yeah. The one above? above. So basically, like that entire paragraph, we talked about how um, 
the main character is questioning how the machine is operating. And, mm -hmm. and then at the very end, uh, you can see from the last episode, unless they need to get a physical gun directly from the ground, the air, or from the water, I process it, it appears to unknown. And I ask myself, with intense DNA, is this the person? Yeah. The person I might be able to start with the secret. So this technology is, is powerful enough to attract attention mm -hmm. and interest even though it's connected to the evil plans of yeah, this. Like, like he's fascinated by the technology, he's curious to learn more about it and see if he can learn its secrets so he can to learn it somewhere else. Yeah, I, I agree with you. I didn't hear everything, but I, I think you, you got it. We have time for a couple more. And your name again? Uh, Christian. Christian. Uh, Which? It's 239. Okay. Yeah, just that one right there. Uh, a little bit. About this one? Yeah, so this machine actually yeah. built a wormhole. Yeah. Um, he's just like amazed about the fact that it's like all terrain. It can pretty much do yeah. whatever. And Absolutely. Saying, a lot of exclamation points yeah. to begin with, right? And he was saying how he was still, tone. still ignorant about like all the amazing things that it can do and how it inspired like, other people to work on it and stuff. Yeah. Great. Another one who was, and your name again? Rob. Rob. Rob? Yeah. Okay. What page? Uh, it's on 226. It says, moreover, why should I not admit it? So what did I do? It's a mix of, of both. It's a great example, yeah. yeah. That can be shown, analyzed. As I specified in the instructions, you're free to copy and paste quotes, even long quotes, inside your assignment to attach them your analysis and your commentary. Just keep in mind that you'll have to make your assignment longer, right? If the minimum length for the assignment is 300 words, those cannot include the quotes. Okay, and in Google Docs, you can select sections and then go to Tools, Word Count, and have the Word Count just for those paragraphs. Okay, thank you, Rob. And I don't have time. I'm, I'm happy to see that so many were eager to participate, but I just have time to show the scenes from the movie, and then I will do the discussion about the movie next week after you've seen the scene. The film, the story are very easy to follow as it happens quite often with horror movies. Horror movies are not complex, are not complicated. They may have some element of mystery, but the story itself develops, flows in a linear or quasi-linear way. And this is true, particularly true of Christine. So, and this is the very beginning of the film. The movie is from 1983. This is supposed to be the factory where Christine, a flame of fury, is being made. But from the very act of creation of the car, you see that the car is evil from its birth. 